This is a world premiere of a book called uh, Breakfast of Champions. It's not even my wife has seen it, and I've simply passed the rumor around that it exists. And <coughs> so here we go. It, uh, it's a novel. My name is Dwayne Hoover, and I am an experiment by the creator of the universe. I am the only creature in the entire universe who has free will. I am the only creature who has to figure out what to do next and why. Everybody else is a robot. <laughs> I am pooped. <laughs> I wish I were a robot, too. It is, <laughs> it is perfectly exhausting having to reason all the time in a universe I never made. The experiment with me began on the planet Earth. All around me were machines who appeared to be thinking and planning and worrying as much as I was, but they were no more reasonable than the Pontiac automobiles I used to sell. No, no more puzzled or adaptable than the music boxes my wife Celia used to collect. Celia was a robot too. <laughs> Programmed to collect music boxes, among other things. She was programmed to say she loved me at first, to act as though she did for a little while. I couldn't imagine why she loved me. I know the answer now. She was that kind of a machine. <laughs> Later on, she killed herself, and I raged around the house asking, Why, why, why? Now I know why. She was that kind of a machine. <laughs> My only child, a son, turned out to be a homosexual. And I used to agonize about what I'd done wrong. I hadn't done anything wrong. He was that kind of a music box, that kind of a Pontiac, that kind of a robot, that kind of a machine. He was very influential in the arts in the city where I lived. I named him George, but everybody called him Bunny. He was a clever amateur actor and an interior decorator. He was programmed that way. I feel like a boob now that I never caught on that everybody was a robot but me. There were a billion clues. Some robots used to like me and others used to hate me, and I used to wonder why. They were simply liking machines and hating machines. And not only the people, but the birds and the animals and the fish and the bugs and the germs and the plants were robots too. They were cunning clocks. They were programmed by the creator of the universe to test me to confuse and scare and tempt me, to please and disappoint me, to cheat me and give me presents, to stir me up. The creator of the universe wanted to see how I responded to every conceivable situation. Jesus Christ, I was sick and tired. <laughs> who was Jesus Christ? He was a robot who died for my sins. <laughs> what were sins? They were programs which a majority of the robots were programmed to think were awful. There were prisons all over the planet which were cages for sinners. There was one near me which was called the Shepherdstown Adult Correctional Institution. They had a special wing of cages for sex offenders who were robots programmed to do things with their reproductive apparatus other than reproducing. One robot I knew, slightly, was programmed to stick his penis up the rear ends of chickens and ducks. He was caught doing this. He was actually photographed while doing this. A robot judge fined him $1,000 for that and sent him to the adult correctional institution for seven years. There was a lot of clock stopping on Earth for amusement or revenge or food. There was an electric chair up at the adult correctional institution. Robots would strap a robot in it because he had done something wrong, supposedly, and they would meld his works with electricity. When I was a boy, my stepfather taught me how to hunt. We would go out into the fields with dogs and guns, and we would stop little clocks called rabbits and quail. This was for fun and exercise. There was a slaughterhouse in my town where stopping clocks was an industry. We ate the meat of all the clocks they stopped. I went to see how they did it one time. I threw up, and I threw up. Is my adventure in the universe over? No. I am on a new planet now, which is unnamed and nearly uninhabited by anything large. It will soon be teeming with my descendants, I hear. They will have free will, like me. A few million cells have been sliced from the palm of my right hand, I hear. They are growing in a soupy sea. I am Adam, and the sea is Eve. I walk beside her sometimes. I wade in her. 
Sometimes I swim in her, but she's a little too soupy for an invigorating swim. She makes me feel sleepy and sticky afterwards. So I dive into an icy stream that has just jumped off a mountain. I scream when I dive, and I scream again when I come up for air. I bloody my shin, scrambling up rocks to get out of the icy water. And I laugh, and I think of something to yell. The Creator never knows what I'm going to yell. After my icy dip today, I yelled this, Cheese! The only other big animal here is an angel who visits me occasionally. He is a messenger and an inquisitor from the creator of the universe. He takes the form of a 250-pound male cinnamon bear. <laughs> he is a robot, too, and so is the creator of the universe. <laughs> the bear was programmed to ask me today, Why did you yell cheese? Because I felt like it, I said, which was true. What will I yell tomorrow? I know. The creator of the universe will simply have to wait for it. He can't possibly guess. I now name this planet Mouse. Why do I name it Mouse? I name it Mouse because I feel like naming it Mouse. On Earth, a mouse was a tiny warm robot with whiskers and bright beady eyes. It was said to be fond of cheese, a form of edible decay. And the entire planet Earth was a sort of stinking cheese when I was introduced onto it. I made my entry be from between my robot mother's legs. The Creator had aged it for billions of years just so I could be tested. It bubbled and it rotted. There were far too many robots for a ball that size. It was choked with garbage and sewage and trash, and still the robots went on reproducing. They were programmed to fuck all the time. I was born in a country called the United States of America in a medium-sized abscess on the cheese called Midland City. It was exactly halfway between two poisoned seas. I was born on what the robots called October 12, 1922. The population of Midland City in those days was 96,661 robots and me. One robot in three in Midland City was a black one. You wouldn't think that would matter much what color a robot was. It mattered tremendously. Lots of robots hated robot robots who had different colored skins. My stepfather was a grayish yellow. He crabbed incessantly about the robots who were black. Clothing and hair mattered almost as much. I saw some blood-curdling fights about clothing and hair. One time I grew a beard while I was in the hospital with influenza. When I got out, a stranger without any hair on his face offered to beat the hell out of me. Listen, that stinking cheese was divided up into a hundred countries, and each one had a flag. My flag looked like this. There's a picture of it here. Uh, I was supposed to love it. I tried. Uh, LAUGHTER